Hey cruisers, welcome to the weekly vlog. Hope everyone's doing great. We're only a couple of weeks away from summer. Yay, I'm so excited. Really looking forward to some outdoor activities around here and maybe a little bit less wind in California. Anyway, hope that you've enjoyed our latest videos. This last week we put out our Carnival Miracle Day 2 vlog, which was a sea day, and we put out a little surprise subscriber-inspired episode on what I wore each day of my cruise. It was kind of an outfit of the day concept, and I was, again, this is a totally new concept for us, and I was a little bit nervous about it, but you guys asked me to do it, you pushed me to do it, and we did. We turned the camera around, and a lot of you watched that video and gave me some really great feedback and some ways to improve our outfit of the day for next time, so we will do that again for you. Thank you so much for all the positive feedback. This episode is indeed sponsored by cruiseline.com where you can find reviews, tips, and photos from real everyday cruisers. We use cruiseline.com every single time we are planning a cruise. We love to research, we love to review the, read the reviews, and my new favorite thing to do on cruiseline.com is to go to the tips section. This is something that I only discovered maybe a year ago or so, and they have tips on every ship, and they're fantastic. They are written by the people who have cruised and who have written reviews and have added just really brief, easy to read tips. So if you haven't done that before, be sure to check that out before you plan your next cruise. So what do we have coming next for you guys? Well, first of all, I want to announce our next live stream is, I wanna make sure I get the date right. I've been a little bit bad about my dates lately. <laughs> our next live stream is Saturday, June 17th at noon Pacific time. So that is this coming Saturday at our normal time, the day before Father's Day. If we are going to have a special theme, you will see it announced on social media. So it's really important that you guys follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. You can actually, if you're on our YouTube channel right now and you go to kind of our, our home page for our YouTube channel, there's little links up in the corner to all of our social media pages, but we're super easy to find using the search feature. If you just go over to Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and type in Cruise Tips TV, all one word, we will pop right up. Please be sure to follow us. We have 16,000 subscribers here on YouTube, and only about 2,000 of you are following us on Facebook, maybe 1,500 or so on Instagram or Twitter. So if you're not following us, you're missing out on some updates from us and also some fun photos. We also give little sneak peeks and teasers of things that we're about to release here on this channel. So we don't necessarily benefit by you following us there. We just want to continue to communicate with you and have fun and interact. And that is a great way to do it in between episodes. So be sure to follow us over there. So next exciting thing we're going to talk about is our much long awaited merchandise announcement, but we're going to wait until the end of this episode today. We're going to answer subscriber questions first, and then I'm going to tell you about the merch at the very end. So let's get right to it and answer Monica Blackburn's question. Monica has a fun one. We've talked about similar things before. Hi, Sherry. I love all your tips. I've been trying to convince my parents for years that we should go on a cruise for a yearly family vacation. Every year they shoot it down saying that it is way too expensive. I think it might be about the similar price. A similar price is a land vacation. We typically go to the beach and spend twelve to $1,500 for a week's stay at a small beach house or condo. And that does not include food or entertainment, other than the beach, LOL. We live in North Alabama, about a six hour drive to Mobile, and I believe Carnival has a ship that comes there. So I was thinking, that will be a good one to start with. Do you have any tips that can help me get my parents on a cruise? Okay, you guys, we have to help Monica to get her parents to agree to trying out a cruise. So Monica, you know that Carnival Fantasy sails from Mobile. It looks like they do four and five day little Mexico Caribbean types of itineraries, which would be really fun and probably very inexpensive. You probably want to do some research. Get online and price out the cruise for whatever size your family is and talk to your parents about it. Tell them that the ship has pools and water slides. Tell them they would not have to cook or clean or lift a finger for an entire week. And let's see if it makes financial sense for your family. If anybody else has any ideas for Monica to help her convince her mom and dad to take her on a cruise out of Mobile, let's leave them in the comments below. The only downside, Monica, is that Carnival Fantasy is a very old ship. It's part of the Fantasy class, which is some of the, the oldest ships left sailing in the Carnival fleet. So. 
if you guys can hold out and maybe go over to Florida and sail on one of the newer ships on a seven night itinerary, you're going to have a really nice experience. It's gonna to be totally different. You'll probably be able to get a balcony cabin, whereas on the Fantasy, there are a lot fewer balcony cabins. So you might wanna be open-minded to that too, waiting to get on a newer ship because you're gonna have definitely a more premium experience on one of those ships. But I hope that that helps you. Happy researching and good luck convincing them that they will not have to cook or clean for an entire week. As a mom, I can tell you that would be a big motivator for me. <laughs> okay, next question today is from Elizabeth Molina. Elizabeth says, I'm doing Harmony of the Seas February 2018. Do you know if I can bring water on board the ship? If so, what's the limit? Thanks so much. Okay, Elizabeth, I promised you I would research this, and I did. I went onto Royal Caribbean's website, and according to their official policy, guests are not allowed to bring beer, hard liquor, fortified wines, or non-alcoholic beverages on board for consumption. Okay, so what that means is you're not allowed to take any beverages on board. However, when I researched this, I found out that on Royal Caribbean, this rule is rarely enforced with soda and water. The alcohol side of things, they're definitely trying to enforce. They definitely want to discourage. However, I'm hearing from a lot of different sources that it's probably okay to take on some water and some soda. If I were you, I would give it a try and I would limit it to maybe 12 bottles of water and 12 a 12 pack of soda, if you will. I hope that that helps you. And if anybody has any experience cruising with Royal Caribbean and can weigh in on their official or unofficial beverage policy enforcement, please leave it in the comments below. And Elizabeth, please be sure to research this topic on Royal Caribbean blog as well. They have some good information over there, okay? All right, next question today is from Rhonda B. Hi, Rhonda. Rhonda and I have been chatting a little bit here on YouTube about finding a good travel agent. Rhonda says, hey, Sherry, how do you find a good travel agent? We've tried one once and we're very disappointed and canceled the trip. Okay, Rhonda, this is a really tricky thing because it's, it's an important relationship, right? You're kind of going to need to interview the travel agent. I hate to say it, but it's, you know, it's a very personal decision. But I'm gonna give you some tips to get you started. And once again, I'm going to invite anyone who's watching this show that is a travel agent, you are always welcome to leave your contact information in the comments below for our subscribers. Um, this channel is very much designed to help travel agents to improve their uh, clients' cruises. And we are sort of warm and open to those relationships. So if you're wanting to help Rhonda out, leave your contact information below and she can always contact you. But here's the deal. The first thing we always recommend that you do, Rhonda, is ask for referrals. If you have any friends and family and you're looking for a local travel agent, ask your friends and family who have been on a cruise if they have a travel agent. Sounds like maybe that hasn't worked for you. So the one of the best ways that you can do research on travel agents is by going to cruiseline.com. When you are on their main page, there's a little section across the top that says more. Click on more and it says have a travel agent contact me. And you can fill in your information and have someone contact you. That's one way. Another way is to go to Clea's website, and you had asked me what Clea is, and I had explained to you that Clea website, cruising.org, is basically the Travel Agents Trade Association. So this is a place that trains and educates and certifies travel agents. They also have a section on their website for people like you who are cruise vacationers. So what you'd wanna do is go to cruising.org, click on the, I wanna check and make sure I have this right, the Cruise Vacationer tab, and then use what's called the Agent Finder, and a CLIA certified agent will come up. Again, these are just a few of the different methods that you can use to find a travel agent, but when you are interviewing a travel agent, ask them about their follow-up time. Ask them about their cruise experience. Find out if they have experience working on the cruise line that you're interested in, and go with your gut instinct. It's the most powerful instinct you have. And let me tell you, when I've been working with travel agents, I've worked with several over the years, I always just go with my gut. I look for a really speedy follow-up time and I have had really good experiences with it. I can tell you that when we work with travel agents, we generally get better deals on airfare. We generally get more upgrades than when we do not book with a travel agent. And that may be complete coincidence, but I, I still use a travel agent even though I'm perfectly capable of booking my own cruises. I hope that that helps you. Our last Last question today is from Jenny Welch. Jenny says, do you book cruises and flights yourself or do you use a travel agent for either? We're on the topic of travel agents again. Here we go, Jenny, I know. I love the mock-up shirt and we'll get to that in a minute. Especially the one that says, I'll see you on the high seas and the one that says staff. All right, cool, Jenny. So. When we book cruises, we pretty much already answered this question, but for the flights, I actually, when I do fly, 
into a port, which is actually pretty rare because we like to sail out of our home ports here in California. We have several. We can cruise out of San Francisco, LA, or San Diego within a four or five hour drive. We don't really live close to any of those places, but we can drive to any of them, and I really prefer not to fly. But when I do, I absolutely do use my travel agent because she has a lot of information about the intricacies of flying. There are definitely times when you may not want to. I can tell you that we've had really good experiences with Princess Cruises um, Easy Air program, which is something that once you book your cruise, right inside the cur uh, cruise personalizer, you can click on Easy Air, and their prices are incredibly competitive. And they have two different types of fares. They have kind of the flexible fares, and then they have non-refundable fares, so you get to choose. And you can't beat the fact that they provide you with a guarantee. So if that flight is to be late, they're going to guarantee that, that that they're going to get you on another flight to the ship in time where the ship has to wait for you. So that's a real perk to booking directly with the cruise line. But again, I've only had experience doing that with Princess and otherwise I do indeed use my travel agent. That's all the questions we have for today. So now back to the exciting announcement, you guys. If you saw our last live stream, we talked about merchandise. We talked about the fact that we finally have some t-shirt designs together for you. And we are excited to announce that they are officially for sale on Amazon. I'm going to tell you how to find them really quickly because it's so easy, it's crazy, but we get a lot of questions about this. So what you wanna do is we're gonna to try to link to them in the notes below, but sometimes that doesn't work. YouTube is kind of funny about what kind of links we post. So if for some reason you do not see links below, you need to go to amazon.com, which is where we are selling t-shirts right now, and you need to type in Cruise Tips TV with no spaces, all one word, and the t-shirt designs that we have will pop up. Right now, we have three designs and four that are being approved by Amazon's merchandise department. I'm hoping by the time that this airs, Amazon will have approved the remaining four t-shirts. What that means is that we will have this t-shirt here, which we showed you on the live stream. It says, I spent my money on cruises and foolishly wasted the rest on the back, and it has the Cruise Tips TV logo on the front, We'll have this one, and we will also have six more designs. So we really mixed it up for you guys. We listened to your feedback on the live stream, and we put designs together saying what you wanted the t-shirts to say. We have a really cute design that my husband put together that's kind of circular on the front that says, you, me, and the sea. Is that what it says, you, me, and the sea? which was a shirt that we saw in a Gap store at some point, and everybody went crazy on our Instagram page over this shirt, so we made something kind of similar. We also have See You on the High Seas as a slogan. We have some that are designed to be more feminine fonts, but they are all t-shirts. Right now, we cannot do anything other than t-shirts. We want hoodies, polos, and tanks, but Amazon doesn't offer them, so you guys need to be patient with us while we try out Amazon as just a starting point for our merchandise program. Okay, we've been doing research on other options. Some of you have given us killer ideas on different alternatives for our merchandise, including um, Spreadshirt. I actually love what I see on Spreadshirt, except for one thing, the prices. These shirts run under $20, and that is a motivator for us. We do not want you guys to have to pay 30 or 40 bucks for a cotton t-shirt. I think that's ridiculous. I love that Spreadshirt offers t-shirts, tanks, polos, sweatshirts, fun, like little kind of sultry off the shoulder um, sweatshirts that are super cute and other merchandise. But we don't wanna stick it to you guys with the prices. So please give us some time to do some more research and find another option. We're gonna try to offer things like mugs, lanyards, anything and everything that we possibly can for sale, but we're gonna commit to keeping them reasonable for you. So bear with us. Hope that this vlog has not been too crazy fast paced for you all. Join us on our next live stream on Saturday at noon Pacific time. And if you have any questions for me, you can always leave them in the comments below as well as your episode ideas. Thank you all so very much for watching and thank you so much to our awesome sponsor, cruiseline.com. And until next time, you guys, we will see you on the high seas. Bye. Cruise around the week. <laughs>